What is going on guys? Rated Designs here again with another tutorial. <laughs> I'm cranking these out guys because you know I really am trying to uh, give you guys the most and the uh, you know basically give you guys everything you need to become a successful graphic designer. Get into those schools that you want and uh, really just go on life being you know creating doing anything and anything you possibly can when it comes to the world of arts of course in the world of arts there is absolutely no limits um, so uh, yeah I'm just gonna show you guys a cool medieval text they use this a lot on banners a lot of people ask me hey that is a cool ass font where do you get these and you know how did how do you do certain things and I'm just gonna show you how to do it because honestly getting sick of ass being asked because obviously it's a hit so might as well tell you guys how to do it and it's pretty simple um it's nothing that you're going to need certain types of you know uh, plugins or anything everything is done in photoshop it's 100 percent within photoshop and you don't even need to font um i will show you an exact font that you can use to that is actually an adobe preset anyways we're going to get right into it and of course what we're going to do here is we're going to delete everything um, because I don't want to show you. I, I'm going to completely remake the whole thing. So, of course, as I always say before I start any of my projects, I always start a brand new document for text just, you know, to get a perfect feel for what I want to do. First thing we're going to do here is actually we're going to grab a brush tool. And we're going to make a little, we're going to just set up the background because, of course, the background is a huge part of your uh, actual, you know, finished product. Um, so we're just going to add a huge white canvas in the middle, knock that bad boy down to about 10%, merge it down, filter, filter gallery. You can follow this along. This is very simple stuff. Go to spatter and brush strokes, and basically what that does is, is erases all the gradient banding, and you have your background set up. Now, what I like to recommend is using some sort of grungy-looking, cool background, especially with this text. Uh, it's something very simple, and you know, it's really cool. But uh, here, I will show you right now. I'll use this one. And we are going to make this white. <laughs> of course, we're not going to use blue. That's a little much there. And we're just going to slide this on in here. Um, I'm going to duplicate. But um, we're going to whoops, move certain parts of this around. It really doesn't matter how this looks. Just as long as you're getting the point across and it looks good somewhat readable and you know lookable shall I say <laughs> you're hundred percent good so once you have that we're gonna just set this on overlay and what that's gonna do is it's gonna give you a nice background now in order now what I like to do also is you know I like to brighten things up so I like to click a white right there and kinda give it a uh, a radial gradient um, to really pop out even more, what you could do is grab another brush, uh, soft brushes now, guys. So of course you don't really need anything, you know, huge right here. Bring this down to a black and kind of encase this. Give it a radial blur type feel, and usually I set this to about 50%, and you should be good now. Um, so that's basically your background. You can merge these layers if you want. I do just because it's a lot easier to. You know, I like a lot less layers on here. Um, all right, so what we're going to do here is here's where we start off with the text. <clears throat> um, there's millions of fonts you guys can find at defont.com. That is D-A-F-O-N-T.com. There's millions of them you can find. Uh, this will work pretty much with anything that's, you know, any type of font period, but this really works perfectly with medieval type fonts, um, gothic fonts, some stuff like that. Works... Uh, works the best with that type of stuff just because it really does make it look like um, you know something from Lord of the Rings or something like that but we're gonna use a preset font that is automatically in Photoshop I believe it's automatically in Photoshop if it's not my bad but it, I, I know it was automatically in mine the font name is called Trahan Pro or Trajan Pro whatever it is I don't know how you pronounce it um, it's T-R-A-J-A-N Space Pro, I think everyone has it, I don't know. But um, this is a font that you guys are 
I mean, if you guys are in the Call of Duty community, if not, you might know this from iReaps' videos. Um, so, I R E A P V R. Of course, that's their. There you go. <laughs> it's that font. Um, but for today, we're going to use just the word tutorial. Just because it works well with it. Um, I like to just keep it simple like that. <clears throat> we're going to buff this up a little bit too. All right. Now, also. To start out, I do want you guys to understand you can do this multiple ways. Um, but what I like to do is I like to start out with a you know a medium gray, something like that. You'll see it change right there, and that, that's usually perfect because then you can really add highlights and really screw with this whole thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna first go into our FX um, tab on our on our uh, layers bar. And we're going to go into our bevel and emboss. Now, a lot of people, they like to overdo this bevel and emboss. We're going to untick use global light right off the bat, just you know, just in case you do want to get a certain type of effect. Um, so we're going to make our depth 1,000% per, depth. The uh, reason is because you really want to get that chisel. Um, if you want to, even with the technique, you can switch that to chisel hard, and it gives it even a harder um, chisel, which is something I like and you can really what I do is, is I move the size up to about yeah about 29 is pretty good for it, this size text um, it might get a little pixelated that's why you might not want to you want to just maybe keep it smooth so um, you know you can it, it may differ you know if you use smooth so for this tutorial um, I'm actually going to use smooth just because I really want to show you guys you know the whole f you know flow of what actually is going now this is going to differ from text so make it to where um, if you guys can see this uh, R and this O is where the center line almost looks like there's you know kind of almost starts to look like it's an engravery type thing and that's what we want um, and you're going to keep this the same uh, our highlight mode we're going to move down to 25 and our opacity for the shadow mode is going to be around 25 as well. Now, you, these can differ, of course, like for this. I actually might want to do 50s for both of them, just because it, it, it's worth it. Um, drop shadows, uh, really doesn't matter what you do here. I usually do 0, 20, 50, and then move this down to about 50%. And that you know gives it a nice backdrop type uh, scenario. And that's really it all we're going to use for our effects. The rest of your effects is all going to be Photoshop oriented. It's all going to be stuff that we use in Photoshop. So one of the cool things is, is from Evan Eckert's tutorial, uh, I think he did about two years ago, a year ago, he showed you guys how to do a metal texture in Photoshop. Um, and here's how you do it. Uh, you basically command, you duplicate your text. Um, we're going to take off the drop shadow and rasterize this layer. Now what that does is it literally just makes a copy with no drop shadow. You're going to want to go up to Filter noise add noise now mine is already set yours is automatically going to be set to like uniform and like a gaussian and it's going to look like a bunch of little weird like like red white red rainbowish type stuff all you have to do is have monochromatic um move the amount up to about 200 uh, and hit OK. Now, of course, you're probably thinking, like, what what is that? Um, we're gonna I'm gonna show you exactly what to do. You're gonna after that go to filter, blur, motion blur. Now, motion doesn't really matter the way you do this. Um, Any way it'll work. Uh, I, I like to do it maybe on a 41 degree angle. That, that usually works pretty well. Um, sometimes it'll do maybe a 20 degree angle. Sometimes that that works pretty well too. Uh, it's really up to you, but for here we're going to do 20, and you're going to really want to kind of look at to where it gives it this effect. And all we're going to do is, is hit Alt, click between the layers, and create a layer mask. Or, or sorry, yeah, is that a layer mask? Yes, or clipping mask. Sorry about that. And you can switch it to overlay if you want. Um, it's up to you. Uh, it doesn't really change from my perspective. Yeah, it doesn't really change, and you can duplicate it to give it even more of that metal feel. But it, I mean, if you zoom in right here, we'll zoom into about 100%. You guys can, it kind of gives it that feel of a metal, and that's what you're what you're looking for. So uh, after that, 
this is going to stay in their bottom layer. So we're going to just, the, everything you're going to need to do is in this clipping mask. You're going to keep creating new layers in the clipping mask. So the first thing you want to do is, is, if you guys have my brush pack, which is provided in my 40k pack, and I will put out I'm, the brush, brush pack that it was supposed to be out, I'm completely sorry about that. Uh, these brushes will be in there, the grunge brushes. Um, what I would do is, is with this, just alternate. Now, for instance, uh, the top usually is going to be a, a lighter color, so you take your white grunge brushes on top, switch them to, switch mine to like an overlay, 50%. And then create another layer, switch to black. And on the bottom, do the exact same thing. Switch mine to overlay, 50%. Uh, actually, with black, I usually don't use overlay. I usually just lower the opacity. Sorry. Um, that looks pretty good. Uh, maybe a little bit more. And really all here is you're going to want to just keep screwing with the, the darks and lights. Um, so for instance, different brushes will do different things. Um, of course, you guys know that. Um, just new layers all the time, and we're just going to keep adding this grunge feel to it. Um, and what it, what it does is, is it just kind of adds this more of a, you know, really distinguished metal feel, dirty metal feel to it, which is kind of what you're going to get in a medieval setting, which is exactly what I want. And after that, after you have, you know, your grunge all done, you're going to go to a soft brush. This is all in a clipping mask. I know you can do this in many different ways, but this is the way I choose to do it. You know, kill me if there's other ways to do it, but I like to do it this way. Um, and we're going to take a white brush. You're going to hold shift and go over the top layer, almost top half of the text. Then we're going to go black, new layer, clipping mask bottom half of the text, hold shift, and what that's going to do is create a natural gradient, and on the top you can switch this to an overlay and move the opacity down, black, same thing, overlay, move the opacity down to about, mine I'd go with about 35. Now, <laughs> we pretty much, you know, let's zoom out a little bit, you can say, hey, that's, that's a pretty cool text, right, you know what I mean? looks good I mean I, I would I would use it yes but let's make it even more metal um, we're going to import a texture oh my god he's actually using a texture yes I'm going to use a texture on this um, it's sometimes it's it's legitimately you know you're, you're gonna have to use it um, where is it I believe it would be, you know, you can use any texture you want. It's just mine's a seamless texture right here, and I usually put this over everything. This is just a seamless metal texture. If you guys want, um, you know, let me know. I'll uh, actually I'll put this in the uh, description. And I pull this below everything other than the actual, you know, this part, and I switch to overlay. And it gives it even more of a rustic feel to it. And that is legitimately how you do this text. Um, from right here, it looks cool. Actually, for darker backgrounds, you might want to up the uh, drop shadow of this because you, know, you really want to have things stand out. And that's literally how you do it. Um, looks, looks pretty cool to me. Um, oh, I am, what am I doing? Okay, here we go. Um, and then, you know, of course, to give this effect, you're going to, whoa, what did I do here? Let's see what I did wrong. Oh, okay. Um, we're going to rasterize this, merge these layers. Uh, and for, you know, of course, you guys know how to do this type of part where you can make it. I like to use a Gaussian blur on this, and then you kind of just lower the opacity. And that basically is our tutorial, guys. So for everyone who tuned in, thank you very much. Um, for everyone who didn't... <laughs> You guys got to check this stuff out if you have seen it. Um, but this is a, uh, 
you know, of course, cool tutorial that you guys can do. Um, the lights, of course, I didn't add into it, but I mean, it's pretty simple. Um, pretty simple stuff. So um, just let me know what you guys think. Um, you know, of course, leave comments, and I'm going to try to upload as much as I can in the next month, two months. You know, I'm really trying to blow this channel up and make, you know, give you guys the best that I possibly can. You know, I'm, I'm putting my all into this. So anything you guys want, please um, do not be shy to contact me. Um, check out my new website. It should be in the description. Check out everything, guys. I'm, I'm ready to designs. Enjoy and like this video.